um, this video will be a culturally Hegelian video. Maybe someday people will acknowledge that these are my best videos. I don't know. Uh, so I will mix together extracts from modern pop culture, uh, Julius Evola, and an actualized version of Hegel. <clears throat> so I depict broadly the structure of the, of the video. You can find the structure of the video in the description below if you want to see the plan of the video and if you want to skip some parts and go directly to the parts that might interest you best. Um, I will begin briefly by making a remark about the use of condoms and then I will begin the real uh, interest of the video. I will present a Hegelian view of love, sex and the relationship between men and women throughout all the layers of beings. Broadly, um, the free part structure of being, according to Hegel, uh, logic, nature, spirit, uh, and you can see the plan down below. And I will go through every layer of being, every mode of being, every um, level of being, so to speak, and I will make brief general comments in relation to love, sex, and eventually women. And once this is done, I will uh, go through the whole encyclopedic process once again to interpret um, a sexual relationship uh, throughout all the layers. So I, I, will, I will go through the encyclopedia twice, so to speak, and I will just give the broad ideas. My purpose is to convert you to cultural Hegelianism, which is a religion and a philosophy at the same time. So, yeah. Uh, I begin um, by a question about condoms. Condoms, are they good or are they bad? It's a very difficult question because it's a, a question of perspective. Uh, the first idea that one can have is that if you make love to a woman for the first time, a woman that you don't know, without a condom, that's bad because there's a risk of getting her pregnant and, and transmitting sexually transmitted diseases. So making love to an unknown woman for the first time without a condom is kind of evil. So the idea is that if you make love to a woman that you don't know, you should use a condom. But then the question is, or the, the remark is that once you are deeply in love with a woman, that you trust her and that you want eventually to, to have a long lasting relationship with you, an act of love, an act of goodness would be to take off the condom and to stop using condoms because you are confident that she's the right partner for you. And after you have made tests to make sure that you cannot transmit sexually transmitted diseases, but also uh, it's a proof that you have confidence in her and that she trusts you. And also it's the, the maybe the ultimate act of love is the will to have children. And you have to take off the condom if you want to have children. And there's a, um, a song by Eminem that I will put in the link uh, in the description down below, which is uh, Love You More. And he says, that's a very romantic love song. He says, at least we know we share this common bond. You're the only one I can fuck without a condom on. That's a great declaration of love, I guess. <laughs> and also from a religious, cultural perspective. Oh... Uh, from the point of view of religiously right-wing traditionalist people, the use of condom is bad in their view because it prevents uh, couples from having children. And in, in the right-wing Catholics in a country like France, the, the hardcore Catholics, uh, they believe that the, the use of condom uh, since a few decades now has bring, brought about the downfall of of birth rates which leads to the ruin of the country and, and, and the future of the country. So um, 
what is almost universally considered as a progress and as something good because it prevents diseases, that it enables people to have free sex, is considered by the, 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 the radical traditionalist as something bad. So depending on your perspective, yeah, that was just a remark. Now I will begin, um, I will begin uh, the process. So uh, you see the plan in the, in the structure below. I will begin by considering the question of love, sex and women from a logical standpoint, uh, from the point of view of the empirical sciences. And then I will adopt a more Hegelian view. Uh, because from an empirical point of view, everything begins with uh, the, the Big Bang, but modern scientists acknowledge that physics is uh, manifesting mathematical laws, mathematical constants, and also the modern mind acknowledges that mathematics and logic belong together. So unconsciously, the modern theoretical physicists acknowledge that the physical universe is the manifestation of logical and mathematical laws. So if we want to go at the root of everything, even in an atheist perspective, one has to envision logic and mathematics as being the primordial uh, structure of the universe. So one cannot really talk about men and women in the realm of logic, but uh, if we take the categories of Hegel's logic, one could say that the concept, which is singular, particular, and universal, women tend to be more singular in a sense that uh, they are more focused on their personality and their relationship with other personalities, whereas men have a, a tendency to go towards the universal to, to in the realm of politics, it's uh, by, by being in, involved in the, in the, in the life of the, uh, of, of, of the city or of the country. And in the realm of science, men have a higher tendency towards elevating their thoughts towards what is universally true, uh, a, a detachment towards the empirical aspect of existence, whereas women are more singular. And another relationship of logical categories that the inner and the outer, inside and outside, which are moments in the, in the Hegel's logic of essence, that um, what is important for a man is what is inside, his, his spirit, his mind, his courage, his confidence, whereas women are more on, on the side of the external appearance. So the, the appearance, the external uh, outside presence is more important for a woman, whereas a man will be judged more on what is inside him, his inner strength, so to speak. And also the categories of the positive and the negative, one could envision that the relationship between men and women, although at this level, there are no men and women yet. We are in the realm of logic, but uh, the, the woman is the positive of the man or the negative of the man. And the man is the positive or the negative of the woman. They are in a, a conceptual relationship with one another. And also we find in, in Hegel's logic, the categories of attraction and repulsion, which are also found in physics and, and the, the, the men and women are in, in relationship of attraction and repulsion with one another. So, um, we have no women and men yet in the realm of logic, but I'm just trying to show that there is already categories of uh, love, if one might speak of love in a realm of pure logic. Yeah. Uh, then, in the realm of mathematics, which is derived from logic, um, sex and love and man and woman is represented in the realm of mathematics, and Evola agrees, and, and Pythagoras and the ancient Greeks already knew this, that the one is considered as a masculine principle, whereas the two, the moment of duality, represents symbolically the moment of the woman. And the three, the three, sorry, is the one uniting itself with the two, which become three, and they become one again but after having been separated, and this is love, the idea of reuniting what has been separated, when the, the two become one, one and two make three, but it's a, a three-part process, which is one. That's a process of, of, of the Christian trinity, in a way. So that's what we could say briefly about love in the realm of mathematics. 
and and beauty i will briefly talk about this is considered as a harmony of the many and the one this is kant who says this in his logic that what is beautiful is a harmonious totality namely a unity which contains within itself uh, a plurality and beauty in in every uh, manifestation is whether it's poetic uh, physical artistic uh, philosophical even is there's the idea of symmetry and geometrical structure so these are mathematical determinations uh, yeah then we enter the realm of physics how can we find love or sex or women <laughs> We, we, there are no women yet in physics because from an empirical standpoint it's only in the realm of anthropology and biology that we find sexes and genders but uh, in the realm of physics one could say that the relationship between light and matter which are considered by modern physicists as being both waves and particles and that they are, they are in an interacting reciprocal process that it's a, a game of, of love because light tries to become material, matter tries to become um, uh, immaterial, by the, the waves become particles, the particles become waves, they have this, this dualistic uh, mode of, of being, so to speak. Uh, also, another idea um, of, of, of the, the, the representation of love in the realm of physics is the idea, the Newtonian idea of universal attraction that the, the celestial bodies are attracted by one another. That's what sets the, 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 the movement of the planets and the stars into motion. It's attraction, which is the physical language that we use in, in, in defining love. Uh, also, it is represented in, 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 in the imagination that the earth, the earthly existence represents the feminine, whereas the sky represents the masculine principle. And the world soul, the soul of the earth, the soul of the planet, is said to be feminine, whereas the world spirit is more masculine. And another illustration in the realm of physics is that the sun, the light of the sun, is envisioned to be masculine, whereas the moon, which has no light of its own, but can only reflect the light of the sun, is said to be feminine, to be more passive, to be a mirror of the sun. So we have this duality. And also... Uh, in the realm of electricity and magnetism, in electromagnetism, we have a unity of positive and negative charges and, and the, the two poles of a, of a magnetic field, or, or, of a magnet, and it is said that, that love is magnetic and that love can electrify uh, a relationship. So we, we use, in the, in, the, in, the, in the terminology of human love, uh, physical determinations. And in an electromagnetic field, the positive and the negative are in unity. They are in a love relationship, one might say. Um, then we enter the realm of chemistry. How do we find love or sex in the realm of chemistry? Um, the fundamental feature of chemistry is that various substances, different substances, react with one another and, and become one. Uh, and uh, my vocabulary is not enough, is not sufficient to express the idea in English, but we learn in high school that uh, the electronic structure of the atoms, there are circles, I do not have the proper terminology, but there are circles around the, the nucleus of the atoms on which a certain determinate number of electrons can, can set themselves. And the, the chemical reactions are produced by the, the will to... <laughs> To, to, to for the will of the electrons to fall in love with other electrons and they feel attraction and if an atom could speak he could say depending on the number of electrons surrounding his external circle i miss you i miss an electron or i need you to complete me so the atoms are in love and this this love creates chemical reactions and this is what brings about the changes of matter and the, the, the modification of the of the substances the material chemical substances which react with one another and also uh, the difference of between physics and chemistry is that there can be um, um, there can be um, 
modifications at a distance in the realm of physics, a magnetic influence, gravitation, but in the realm of chemistry, the bodies, the substances have to be in direct contact with one another. And in sex, that's the same thing. In order to have sex, one has to be in, in direct contact. So there's this idea uh, in, in chemistry. Um, then, in the realm of biology, well, I will not go into detail, but everyone understands that it is within the realm of life and biology that uh, the genders first appear, that sex as, as a physical activity appears in the, in the animal world and also in, in plants, so to speak, and that reproduction occurs and it is where life appears in the empirical perspective and life can be said to be a product of love because it takes two different genders and reproduction and copulation and, and sex in order to produce offsprings and life. So one could say that from an empirical standpoint, the whole realm of gender organisms, of, of, of gender differentiated organism is a product of, of sex and love. That's a way of envisioning things. Um, then, the, I follow the logical structure of an encyclopedic view of being. So after biology, we have socio-biology, which can be called anthropology, which is the realm of um, human, um, human biology. So uh, this is where we find the difference between uh, the, the male human and the female human. And in anthropology, uh, the bodies of males and females are all identical in a sense that all humans are universally identical, but they are particularly differentiated. And the, 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 the average structure of the body of each ethnic group or racial group differs in uh, physical characteristics. And to take an example, the, the average size of the body, the average size of the breasts and the shape of the breast for the woman, the, the structure of the face for men and women differs depending on, on each racial groups. The average size of the penis is different for each racial groups. And um, the sexual habits, which are still natural and not yet cultural at this point, are different within each uh, human group uh, on, on, a, on a natural level, I say. And the folk soul, uh, the, the, the soul of a people, um, all humans share a common soul, but this universality is differentiated in particular uh, souls and each people has its, his own, his own uh, way of expressing love, uh, love relationships. So love is universal among all cultures, but it is particularized in each um, ethnic group. Okay, then I follow the structure of Hegel's encyclopedia. After anthropology and sociobiology, we have the realm of psychology, which is in the continuity. And um, here I, I will not dwell very long because the, the soul may be one of the most important determinations in, 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 in trying to understand sex and love and when women. So, uh, in order to understand what the soul of a woman is, one has to understand all other determinations of being. The one that I have just mentioned, physics, chemistry, logic, mathematics, and so on and so forth, and all the, the ones that I will mention. So I will just say that in the realm of psychology, we have the idea precisely of the soul, the psyche, and the different kinds of behaviors between men and women, and the sexual behaviors and sexual expectations and, 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 and interactions and modes of, of behaving uh, are different in men and women. So I will, I will just give the broad picture. Then we have psychiatry, which is the realm of psychological, mental diseases and illnesses. And here, to speak very briefly, if we want to, if we want to understand uh, love and sex and men and women, we have to acknowledge that men and women on average suffer from different kinds of diseases and, and that the sexual problems of males and females may be identical in, in some in some respect, but they are uh, also very different. That women, for instance, have a higher tendency of suffering from hysteria. Uh, men suffer more, more from um, schizophrenia, for instance, 
So there can be a counterexample, but on average, men and women suffer from different uh, mental diseases. And in the realm of sexual fantasies, male fa males' uh, sexual fantasies and women's sexual fantasies are not identical. And we, we will see later that some of these fantasies can be expressed in art uh, and, and modern pop culture. But it's ju I'm just giving the broad picture, the broad picture in order to understand uh, love and sex and women and men in all the realms of of being in all the layers. <sighs> okay, now after anthropology, psychology, etc., we enter the realm of objective spirit, which can be can, which can begin with economics. And if you have to understand love and sex and women in the realm of economics, one could say that the expectations of a society are not the same for males and females in almost all cultures because men are expected to provide for the woman whereas women are expected to to care for the house it's a classical traditionalist view but it still holds true today there are more women who work at home than men and in order to understand this economic determination one has to understand all the previous determinations, the psychological, anthropological, biological determinations, because each moment in the development of the encyclopedia, encyclopedia contains all the previous moments in itself. It's a, a more fully developed process. But yeah, uh, also one can say that um, um, women and, and men uh, have a different kind of uh, different kind of earnings, a uh, different kind of jobs. There are there are particular jobs where the quantity of men is much higher than that of women. Uh, they have different um, uh, vocation, so to speak. Uh, there there has been studies to show that men are more more focused on um, jobs demanding interaction with things, whereas women are are more comfortable in jobs requiring interactions with people. They have a more pro-social tendency, whereas men are more uh, mechanical uh, in, in, in the idea of, of manipulating objects, whereas women are more uh, comfortable with the idea of interacting with other people. So this psychological determination has a huge role and a huge impact upon the economic um, destiny of men and, and females. Then. Uh, in the realm of uh, sociology, it includes uh, marriage, sexual habits, social roles, social status, education. And in order to understand uh, love, sex and women, one has to understand that the expectations of uh, males and, and females in a marriage relationship are not the same. That... Um, Traditionally, the marriage is an opportunity for the woman to be provided for and cared for uh, for the rest of her life. And for the man, it's an opportunity to gain access to, to sexual intercourse. But it's also a limitation for the male because when he's married, officially, he's not allowed to cheat on his wife. So he limits his opportunity. And men are determined by sociobiology and by psychology to seek uh, the greatest amount of, 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 of partner to multiply and to increase their chances of propagating their genes. Whereas women expect more loyalty and to be uh, a, a man who is faithful because pregnancy and raising children implies the need to be cared for by a provider. So yeah, um, also the sexual habits of, of males and females are different depending on the, the social status. One does not make love in the same way in, 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 in a working class environment and in a, a high bourgeois environment. It's also determined. Uh, the education of men and women is different. Uh, although in the modern world, men and, and or girls and boys are sent together in the same schools and they follow the same curriculum and the same set of, of, of study, uh, historically, uh, women have not had access to education or, or to a limited kind of education, but also there, there, has, there are uh, schools for boys and schools for girls and women and men do not, or boys and girls do not succeed as well in a different kind of, of endeavors. 
uh, women tend to, or, or girls tend to choose a certain type of, of, of educational uh, road, whereas uh, males tend to drop out earlier, more frequently. There's a higher rate of, of educational failure for men, but also in, in the higher education, men succeed uh, better in some uh, fields of some endeavor of study or, or science, etc., etc. There are questions about how young boys and young girls should be should be brought, the kind of, of toys they have to play with in order to become uh, real men or real women in the future. But if we want the sexes to be equal and the genders to be equal, we should change the, the, the upbringing of, 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 of boys and girls. These are ideas that are being thought and debated about. Uh, in, in the modern West, yeah. Then, in the realm of uh, politics, um, if we want to understand the, 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 the interaction between uh, men and, and women and, 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 and the sexes, uh, one has to understand the relationship to power, um, the power which has been granted uh, to female, the emancipation of females, the rise of feminism, the right to vote, which has been granted to women in mostly Western nations at first in the 20th century, the rise of feminism, uh, the will of, of women to be economically emancipated from men, uh, which is also, uh, if you bring, it, it, it is connected to the realm of economics, but politics, sociology, economics are intertwined, so to speak. But if you allow women a greater freedom and to become financially responsible, it means that they will they will they will enter the workforce and they will have less time to have children. So there's there will be the more women work, the less children they will have. It will have, it will have an impact upon demography, and this is one of the main reasons why the West is suffering demographically from. Uh, below replacement level of reprodu reproduction because of the emancipation of women. Uh, men and women do not have the same expectations from political parties and the rise of feminism has coincided with the rise of the welfare state and an increase in cosmopolitan politics. Uh, are they correlated? Is there a cor correlation between the fact that women are allowed to vote and the fact that in the countries where women uh, in the Western world has been granted uh, equal rights, uh, the, 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 the era of women equality in the political realm has seen a tremendous increase in the power and extension and intensity of state intervention and in, in massive immigration. So is there a reason why women would vote for leftist parties or right-wing parties which promote left-wing uh, politics, maybe it has to be understood in the realm of psychology, anthropology, economics, etc. E every determination of being, every layer of being has to be understood in order for the next, um, for the next determination to be grasped. This is Hegel's philosophy. I simplify to the utmost, but I just give the broad picture. Uh, okay. Now, in the realm of geopolitics, uh, I can list a few examples of uh, the historical role that women have played in geopolitics. Uh, the official uh, reason why the, the Trojan War uh, in the Iliad began is because Ellen, I think, was uh, uh, stolen, was captured by the Trojans and the Greeks had to rescue her. So the most, one of the most emblematic books uh, in the history of um, Western civilization begins with the, 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 the capture of a woman and it starts a war. So yeah, uh, in, in Roman history, the, 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 the theft, for lack of a better word, of the Sabines, um, the, the women from a, region of the Latium, the Roman men were in need of women to expand and to, to multiply and to, to grow in strength for the early Roman uh, city, and they stole the women uh, from, a, 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 from a tribe uh, of the Latium, and it, it has been a very important uh, event in the history of Rome, which has enabled the later development of the Roman Republic, and yeah. Uh, it is 
said by uh, anthropologists that many intertribal warfares, conflicts between various tribes, have been led historically. Uh, we are not yet in the realm of geopolitics, strictly speaking, but in inter neither international, because a tribe is not strictly speaking a nation, but in inter-human group conflicts, uh, most conflicts in the primitive societies have been led by um, the will of the men to conquer the women of the other tribe, to, to, to have access to sexual resources and reproduction and to increase the genetic expansion of their own tribe. And to illustrate uh, an, an important geopolitical event in relation to women, the, the destiny of Northern America and Southern America, uh, the colonists in Northern America brought their women with them and, and the Spanish and Italians and Portuguese of Southern America, the, the white Europeans who went to Southern America, usually they did not bring their women with them. And that's why Southern America is mostly mixed race between Africans, Europeans and natives and, and white America precisely is predominantly still white because the Anglo-Saxons and the Germans and the Scandinavians and the, the Dutch, etc., who came to America uh, the early settlers uh, brought their women with them. So that's an illustration of how the relationship between men and women has shaped a world geopolitics. Uh, yeah. Now, in a question of history, which is history, in a Hegelian view, is that which contains all the determinations of objective spirit. An objective spirit contains all the determinations of subjective spirit. And subjective spirit contains the determinations of nature and logic. So it, it has to be taken into account. Each step uh, forward must include within itself all the previous steps. This is Hegel's philosophy. Uh, there hasn't been many historically important figures uh, in, in the history of mankind, women have been extremely important because they have given birth to men, but there are not many well-known historical female characters in any, uh, in any civilization. In Egypt, we can name Cleopatra and Nefertiti, which had uh, real influential power. Uh, in ancient Greece, the Spartan women were very famous for their virtue and their strength and their ability to bring forth real Spartan men, and it was said that the Spartan women were the freest, uh, those who enjoyed the most freedom in the entire Greek world, where women had not many freedom, but in Sparta they had, and the, the, the Spartan men were the strongest. Uh, the oracle at Delphi, the, 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 the prophetess responsible for speaking the oracles, which played such an important role in Greek geopolitics and Greek culture and Greek religion, was a woman. The, the pity of Delphi was a woman. Uh, in Rome, there's the history of Lucretia, the, the rape of Lucretia, which is uh, very famous and which um, enacted changes in Roman law and the relationship, I think, between the, the various factions of the Roman people. Uh, in the Middle Ages, we have uh, Christian female martyrs, women who were killed for their faith. Uh, we have the figure of Joan of Arc, who is considered as the symbol of, of, of one of the, the most important symbols of French history, who was a French nationalist, one, if one could speak it. There was not, strictly speaking, a French nation, but she uh, was a, a young a virgin who helped overthrow the domination of the English and to restore the authority of the king, and she's celebrated as a heroine and one of the symbols of the French nation. There's, of course, Queen Elizabeth, was dominant in a moment when England was a very powerful uh, nation and what, who was uh, economically, politically, but also uh, uh, intellectually and spiritually and and and, and artistically very, uh, very, very developed and very dominant. It was one of the golden age, uh, the golden century of, of England. Uh, and then, of course, Isabella of Spain, which played such an important role in the story of Spain and. Uh, the discovery of the Americas. Uh, Descartes had a, 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 an intellectual relationship with uh, Christine of Sweden. In the 18th century, we find um, uh, 
Catherine of Russia, uh, Madame Châtelet, who helped spread and translate Newton's work in, uh, in French, which had a tremendous influence upon the Age of the Enlightenment and the French Revolution later on. Uh, we find the first political expression of conscious feminism with Olympe de Gouges, who was a French uh, female revolutionary with feminist ideas in, in the context of the 18th century. Then there's Marie Antoinette, the, the wife of uh, Louis XVI, who got executed. Uh, in the 19th century, women in the Western world expressed themselves mostly through literature, but it was at the, at the end and at the beginning of the 20th century, the rise of feminism, the, the struggle for women to, to have access to voting rights and, and to have emancipation from, from uh, uh, the, the, the limitations of, of marriage with first wave, second wave and third wave feminism. We have very famous historical feminist, uh, female, partly feminist, but mostly female, uh, figures, uh, not necessarily feminist, but female figures like Rosa Luxemburg, which played a very important role in Germany, Rosa Parks, uh, Margaret Thatcher, uh, Angela Merkel, Hillary Clinton. These are uh, female figures which have become prominent and have played an important role in the development of their countries and in, in the development of, of world politics. <sighs> yeah. So now we enter the realm of, um, uh, of absolute spirit. And just to explain, in order to understand love, sex, and women, one has to understand each, I repeat, but each determination of being, each level, each degree, each layer of being must be understood through the mediation of all the others. That's Hegel's philosophy. It's very demanding because it requires to conceptualize a tremendous amount of information, but it's not the empirical information which are important. It's the conceptual aspect. Uh, every layer of being must be interpreted and looked at and understood uh, through the mediation of all the other layers. So history, to take a, an example, history is a physical process. It's a chemical process. It's very difficult to interpret history in terms of chemical reactions, but it is partly the case. Yeah. So now we have uh, art. Um, I will um, put two songs, one by Katy Perry, E.T., uh, with Kanye West and uh, your uh, your love is my drug um, uh, by Kesha because these two songs express in my view in the modern pop culture the some of the most profound depth of the female psyche and and women's relationship to love and sex and 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 to their psyche so I will put the link to these two songs um, so, in the realm of art, uh, there is Sappho from Lesbos, a Greek island which gave the word lesbian, which was a Greek poetess, an inspired artist of the 6th or 7th or 5th, 6th or 7th century before um, the Christian era. And there, there has been uh, famous French female poets uh, and, and writers and, and the, the English are very famous for having produced a great number of, of great female writers, especially in the 19th century. Uh, Emily Dickinson, uh, Mary Shelley, Virginia Woolf, and today J.K. Rowling is one of the most known and famous uh, female Anglo-Saxon writers in the world. So the English have produced a great number of great female writers. Um, but yeah, uh, in the realm of religion, um, there's the figure of Eve in the Garden of Eden, who was a victim of the snake, 
and uh, the Virgin Mary, the mother of Jesus. And we know many Jewish women in the Bible. And in the Greek, Roman and pagan mythology, there are countless number of female divine figures. I will not list them, but we have the names of, of Greek female archetypes, Roman female archetypes who are partly the same. And in the pagan Norse, Scandinavian or Germanic mythology, we have the same archetypes, which are slightly different. But uh, there has been book written to explain that the deities or the female, but also masculine, but the, 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 the divine figures of ancient pagan Europe are manifestations of, of moments of the psyche. So it can be interpreted uh, as uh, uh, archetypes which structure the, the mind of males and females and every uh, woman has in her aspects of Aphrodite, Demeter, Athena, Freya, uh, Persephone, uh, etc., uh, etc., um, uh, Artemis, and so on. So uh, modern psychology and psychoanalysis has uh, used and reused the Greek goddess archetypes to understand the human and the female psyche. And um, the relationship of, of, of women with religion, there are also uh, female figures in the Egyptian religion and in the Hindu religion. There, is the, there, there, is a, there are Hindu goddesses. Uh, the Kama Sutra, is a religious book in a way. It's religious sexual practices uh, in India. And in Europe, in the Middle Ages, there were the witches, which were thought to, to be women with magical spiritual powers. And they were feared by, by the church because of their spiritual powers. And it is said that uh, God is love. So that the, the, the fundamental essence of the highest levels of religion is love, at least in the Christian religion. And uh, yeah. And uh, I will skip briefly to philosophy and then I will read uh, passages from Evola. But uh, what can be said about philosophy? Uh, philosophy is the, the will and the attempt to penetrate into the essence of things, the essence of uh, ontology, of the cosmos, of God, of the soul. It's a question about the essence of, of being. So this will to penetrate is a male activity and there hasn't been almost any female philosopher in the entire history of, of, of mankind. And the, the, the two most famous that could be named are Anna Arendt and Judith Butler. They are not really uh, speculative thinking philosophers. So the history of philosophy, they are almost only males and not only in the West. And in the, in the, um, in the book Human Accomplishments by Charles Murray, which is not strictly about philosophy, but about all the endeavors of, of human knowledge and, and human science and philosophy, there, there has been more than 4,000 uh, human figures uh, listed and only 2.2%, 2 which is in the book, I think 88 uh, women uh, are listed. So women in the realm of human accomplishment in science, art, politics, philosophy, technology represent 2.2% of human accomplishments. And the vast majority of these females are white Western females. So it is said that Western civilization is oppressive to women, but it is in the West that we find the highest proportion of significant female figures. And the most famous female scientist, as of now, might be Marie Curie, who was a French, Polish uh, chemist and physicist. And she was a brilliant woman, but yeah. So now I will read um, I will read um, 
a passage or passages from uh, Evora's book Revolt Against the Modern World in the chapter Man and Woman and it is in the realm of religion um, the principles for understanding the sexes and for regulating the relationships that are necessarily established between men and women in every normal civilization this is the purpose of his endeavor uh, he says that in traditional symbolism the supernatural principle was conceived as masculine and the principle of nature and of becoming as feminine in, Hel in Hellenic term the one which is in itself complete and self-sufficient is regarded as masculine conversely the dyad the principle of differentiation and of other than self and thus the principle of desire and of movement is regarded as feminine that's what I said at the beginning of the video when I explored the mathematical view of love, sex, and women, so to speak. Uh, in Hindu terms, the impassible spirit is masculine, while prak prakti, the active matrix of every conditioned form, is feminine. So the masculine is unconditioned, the feminine is conditioned by the masculine. This is the esoteric mystical view of Evola. The cosmic duality of yin and yang, Yang, the male principle, is associated with the virtue of heaven and yin, the feminine principle, with the principle of the earth. So the symbol of the yin and yang in Chinese philosophy can be partly interpreted as a relationship between the male and female principle. They have to balance one another. Uh, he says that when that which is naturally a self-subsistent principle succumbs to the law of that which does not have its own principle in itself by giving in to the forces of desire, then it is appropriate to talk about a fall. And in English, like in French, we use the, the expression to fall in love. To fall in love. So love is the cause and maybe the result of a fall. It is the, the self-subsistent principle which falls into a principle of dependence because of the desire. And uh, yeah, and that's the reason why woman in traditional religious view is considered as a principle of sin, impurity and evil because it is interpreted that it is the cause of temptation. Uh, and a danger for those who are in search of the supernatural because uh, an attachment to the material erotic experience of sex can prevent men in search of a higher principle from uh, elevating themselves but in the process of elevation uh, the, the, the balance of the feminine principle the, the supernatural feminine principle is necessary uh, it says that the feminine principle finds in a, a viril, a manly, but a supermanhood, not manly in a sense of psychological manhood, but supernatural manhood, a viril, virile principle, uh, a stability in which she finds a limit to her restlessness. A man is that which is immovable, and the female is that which is constantly moving in this religious, mystical view. Uh, that it is absolutely necessary for the masculine principle to remain holy itself the female becomes the bride and also the power or instrumental generating force that receives the primordial principle of the immobile male's activity and form uh, in the tantric tibetan representations the male bearer of the scepter is immobile cold and substantiated with light so yeah uh, yeah every traditional civilization is based on the will to order and give form to structure to shape to organize the traditional law is not oriented toward what is unqualified, equal, and indefinite. These are feminine um, determinations or absence of determinations. And we find logic, again, because what is unqualified, equal, indefinite, these are logical determinations. 
or in other words, toward that impersonal mix in which the various parts of the whole become promiscuously or atomically similar, but rather intends, so the traditional so society, these parts to be themselves and to express as perfectly as possible their own typical nature. So to structure, to differentiate, to order, to classify, this is a, 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 a process of the masculine uh, will or the masculine mind, whereas the process of dissolution is the process of feminism uh, not feminism femininity but also feminism but yeah those who are born as men must realize themselves as men while those who are born as women must realize themselves as women uh, so regarding the supernatural vocation man and woman have their own distinctive path to follow uh, then he talks about the path of action and contemplation for the man. Uh, there is heroism in affirmation and in absolute dedication. Uh, the, the, the woman role from this mystical view is to totally give herself to a man and to be entirely devoted to another being, uh, whereas the man has to find a uh, the principle of his being within himself. Yeah. And he talks about the absolute man and the absolute woman. And uh, I, will, I will stop there for now, but uh, I will now quote uh, a passage from Eros and the Mysteries of Love by Evola. I will just read the beginning of the introduction. Uh, he says, Metaphysics, uh, and he talks about the metaphysics of sex, is understood as the search for first principles and fundamental meanings. The metaphysics of sex from an absolute point of view is signified by the sexes and their interaction. But here one could add a Hegelian remark that metaphysics is that which is above the physical. It is a thinking consideration of objects and the, 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 the science of thought is the science of logic, which says, which express what the rules uh, and the principles and the laws and the determinations of thought are. So, since Kant, metaphysics and logic have become identical. So, the metaphysics of sex might as well be called the, 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 the logic of sex. So, this is where Hevola and Hegel meet. Uh, yeah. He says that there has been studies of the problem of the sexes from anthropological, biological, sociological, eugenic, psychoanalytic points of view and they have multiplied endemically. Uh, and later he talks about um, an experience of love or of, of, of sex, which is not merely physical, but trans-psychological and trans-physiological. And um, we, should, we shall achieve this through the doctrine of the manifold states of being. But what is being? Being, according to Hegel, is a process of self-determination of self-unfolding and I have tried to give the very broad outlines of the various states of being the various layers of being regarding sex love and woman just to explain that in order to understand love sex and women one has to understand all the aspects he talked about subtle and even transcendental modalities of human consciousness Although foreign to contemporary thought, knowledge of this kind formed an integral part of ancient learning and of the traditions of varied peoples. Um, he talks about in an erotic experience, it, it can lead an erotic experience can lead to a displacement of the boundaries of the ego and to the emergence of a profound of profound modes of consciousness. Uh, yeah, and then he talks about how this erotic experience is mentioned or developed in history, ethnology, the history of religions, mysticism, folklore, and mythology. And they all talk about the existence of erotic forms and sexual experiences. He wants to refute the idea that the metaphysics of sex is merely a concept. But in the view of Hegel, the concept is that which gives itself a presence in the natural world and then in the realm of spirit and must conceptualize itself in order to come back into itself and 
I will conclude uh, I will conclude uh, here by talking about Hegel that uh, the concept of love sex and male and female interactions might be in the very broad outline I've just given the broad structure this entire process from coming to logic mathematics and then nature subjective spirit objective spirit absolute spirit which must in the end be the philosophical conceptualization of the whole process and i've just given the broad outline and uh, i will stop there for now i wanted to make a second part and i, I, I will not have the time in this video but i will make a second part in, in the next video where i will go through all the layers of being that I have just mentioned, but from the perspective of the sexual experience itself. Here I have just given the broad outline, and uh, uh, if someone is still watching this video, uh, if you want to understand any object, you have to adopt a Hegelian method of knowledge. And here, the objects that I try to discuss are love, sex, and women and males. And the, the method, I am just showing the method, is to go through all the layers of being and only by a total holistic understanding of an object, one can have a full understanding of this object precisely. So that's the idea that I wanted to, to share.